Hello everyone and welcome to Switch Up. Anyone that's been around this channel for any sort of time will know that I'm a huge fan of the beat em up genre. In fact, I think it's a genre that I've grown to love even more as I've got older due to its perfect pick up and play nature as real life gets in the way and time becomes more scarce. The only reason I still have my Xbox 360 plugged in to this day is because I have the Turtles and the Simpsons arcade games on there as well as Scott Pilgrim, three fantastic games I don't have access to anywhere else. Well, in respect of Scott Pilgrim, that's recently changed as a 10th anniversary complete edition has been announced for the Switch as well as other consoles. And that announcement really gave me the boost I needed to put together a list of some of the best beat em ups you can find on the Switch as it stands right now. So which games make the cut? Well, let's find out. I'm going to start with a very obvious one in terms of the quality of the package and the value for money it provides. This is the Capcom beat em up bundle. This collection includes seven games in total and they are Final Fight, Captain Commando, The King of Dragons, Knights of the Round, Warriors of Fate and two games that have never been available on consoles before in Armored Warriors and Battle Circuit. Each game includes both the English and Japanese version plus the title includes some extras in terms of concept art, bits like that which are always great to see and it has local and online co-op. There are a few of Capcom's classics that I would have liked to have seen included, such as Cadillac and Dinosaurs, Alien vs Predator and the Dungeons and Dragons games, but I suppose that gives hope of a sequel, a beat em up bundle too. For just over £15, this is an absolute no brainer for anyone interested in the beat em up genre. Next up we have Castle Crashers, a game that was originally on the Xbox 360 via Xbox Live and made its way to the Switch about a year ago now. This is a remastered version of the classic game running at 60 frames per second and displayed in high definition and allows for up to 2-4 to four players both locally or online. You can level up your character as you go along, adding skill points to particular traits such as strength, magic or defense, and you can also find and recruit animals to join you on your way and they'll help you in a variety of ways depending on which one it is you've found. As well as the main game it has an arena mode as well as a mini game called Back Off Barbarian, again for in or around £15. If you're looking for a beat em up specifically for multiplayer in mind I would definitely recommend this one as I think that's the best way to play it. The next game is called Die for Valhalla and in some respects this reminds me of Castle Crashers, albeit it has quite a few tricks to differentiate it from the competition. You can choose from a variety of classes to play as, such as an archer or a berserker, and again it includes up to 4 player co-op, albeit this time it's just locally not online. What's interesting about this one is its skill tree system. You basically earn points that you can then put into a skill tree, but you need to try and use them effectively and make your way to the skill you want in as few moves as possible. That's leaving you with enough points to try and get something else as well. It's an interesting system and a very good game. It sells for £10.99, so a bit cheaper than some of the ones so far on the list and is most certainly worth considering. Next up is not one game in particular but there are a variety of classic beat em ups available on the Switch via various publishers. For example you have the Hamster Line and via them you have games like Double Dragon, the Sengoku series and Mutation Nation. You have the Johnny Turbo Arcade label which have games like Bad Dudes and Two Crude Dudes. And you have Arc System Works who have released some of the classic beat em ups such as River City Ransom and Double Dragon 2. These games range from about £4.50 up to about £6.29 and although that does power in comparison when you look at something like the Capcom beat em up bundle, if there's one in particular you're looking for, a childhood favourite for example, you may well find it on here. <laughs> Next up 
Next up then we have the Ninja Saviors Return of the Warriors, which is a remake of a game that started in the arcade in 1987 as the Ninja Warriors and saw a release on the Super Nintendo in 1994 under the same name. This remake has added two new playable characters that you can unlock as you play, two player local co-op, something the original games didn't have, enhancements made to the graphics and it runs at a high resolution. This one is set on a 2D plane as opposed to the usual 3D plane you find in a lot of beat-em-ups, which changes the dynamic of the game to an extent because obviously you can't sidestep out of the way of enemies and instead need to face them head on, which means that the game in some respects is a bit harder than some of the other games on this list as it is easy to get overwhelmed. That being said, once you get used to your characters and knowing when to use their special moves, it's definitely manageable, but it does put up a good fight and is one for those of you that are looking for a challenge. Next we have a game called Streets of Red which sells for about £7.99. This is another retro inspired game which uses pixel art and has copious nods to both beat em ups of the past and just pop culture in general. You'll see that classic building from the first couple of screens of Double Dragon as well as enemies that look like a T-800 and a Xenomorph. You have a variety of characters to choose from and they all play very differently whilst also reminding me of characters from previous beat em ups such as the ninja character that plays very much like Raphael from one of the Turtles games. You get a fairly decent amount of content for your money, there is a multiplayer mode, plus there is a good ending to try and achieve, and with those characters that play very differently, you'll definitely get your money's worth in terms of replayability. Next up is a game called The Takeover, which sets itself apart from a lot of games on this list by not using pixel art. Instead it goes for 3D backgrounds and a CG look for its characters, which almost comes across as claymation in motion. As well as this, the inclusion of two attack buttons allows for quite clever combos and it also has a couple of bonus levels that takes the action away from a beat em up setting, with one scene you drive in a car and the other one a plane, a bit like Afterburner. This came out around the same time as Streets of Rage 4, so perhaps went a bit unnoticed. We never actually got round to reviewing the takeover on this channel, but the channel that I've got a lot of time for, another Switch channel called Switch Corner, a very good channel there, he's well worth checking out. He did review it, and I'm going to put a link to his review in the top in comment, along with the links to any of our reviews relevant to the games in this list. The next one is called Fight and Rage, and full disclaimer, I haven't played this one personally. However, enough people have recommended this one to me in the comments section, people whose opinion I truly value, for me to feel happy to include it on this list. What I do know about this one though, is that it's a love letter to games of the past, and it was developed by just one person. It has three playable characters to choose from, and a variety of endings to discover. It sells for £17.99 over here in the UK, and if you are one of the people that recommended it to me, and there were a fair few of you, I'm sure you're watching this video, please do feel free to elaborate in the comments section and tell us a bit more about what makes this subscriber's pick so good. Okay next up, and I don't normally do this, but I'm going to include the Sega Mega Drive or Genesis Collection. Obviously this isn't just beat em up games, there's a whole host of different games on here, but it includes Streets of Rage 1, 2, 3, Golden Axe, and even Altered Beast, you know, if you're into that sort of thing. In all seriousness though, you have Streets of Rage 1 and 2, which are some of the best beat em ups created, in my opinion at least. You have Golden Axe, which is not far behind them. You have Altered Beast, which is an interesting game to play, it was obviously one of the first games to come out for the Mega Drive, one of their arcade conversions, and it's fun to see where they started in the 16-bit era. And finally you have Streets of Rage 3, which doesn't quite hit the heights of the other two games for me, based mainly down to its difficulty level being so high. The Western version was said to be much more difficult than its Japanese counterpart, but another fantastic thing about this collection is you can actually choose to play the Japanese versions of the game. All the more reason to pick this one up. It goes on sale every so often on the eShop, and I've seen the physical version of this game go for about £17 these days, which is incredible value when you consider the classic games that it includes.
The next one is Bud Spencer and Terence Hill's Slaps and Beans, which is of course based on the comedy duo who starred in a whole host of movies through the 60s, 70s, even into the 80s I believe as well. This beat em up uses a host of the locations found in their movies, as well as using the signature moves of the characters such as Terence Hill's agility and Bud Spencer's strength. It's created with a pixel art style which is the case with a lot of beat em ups these days and the fighting mechanics themselves are very strong. It also includes some really bizarre mini games which I believe are based off scenes or famous moments from their movies and they include things such as an eating competition and a drag race as well. If you have any sort of nostalgia for these characters or their movies I'm sure you'll have a great time here and even if you're just looking for a solid beat em up perhaps stick it on the wish list and wait for a sale. While this list has been in no particular order, these last two are definitely my favourites and the penultimate game is River City Girls. This is a new instalment in the Kunio Kun series, with the most famous release of those in the West probably being River City Ransom. You can choose to play as either Misako or Kyoko, the girlfriends of the stars of River City Ransom, Kunio and Ricky, and you find yourselves on a rescue mission after the boys are kidnapped. You can obviously play as both girls in multiplayer mode and this game makes use of the series famous RPG elements in terms of the items that you can collect and use to buff your character. You will also level up as you play, gaining experience points and learning new moves. As was the case with River City Ransom, this is more open world than most beat em ups. It's not a linear left to right and you can explore the various towns, taking on side quests for people but also having to find the next objective and making your way there. There are even bus stations that you can use to get around the map. It is a bit more on the expensive side than a lot of the games on this list, however it's also a lot longer because of that and this was my favourite beat em up on the Switch until the release of another, the identity of which we're just about to reveal. And the final game, I'm sure you've worked it out through process of elimination, this is of course Streets of Rage 4. Now I mentioned Streets of Rage 1, 2 and 3 earlier in this video, and Streets of Rage 4 was a game that I have been looking forward to for a long long time. Not just in terms of this particular version being announced, but in terms of all of the projects over the years that were touted to be the next instalment but ultimately didn't make the grade. As hard as it was waiting for all that time for the fourth one, in hindsight I'm glad those projects never made it off the ground because what we finally got was absolutely fantastic. This is classic Streets of Rage with a wonderful hand drawn art style. You have a host of returning characters as well as a couple of new ones and the soundtrack, something of course the Streets of Rage series is well known for, is definitely up there competing with the games of the past if not quite surpassing them. It's the little nods about this game that I love so much, the fact that the street gangs and the police will fight each other whilst they're waiting for you to enter the screen. I love the variety in the locations too, I think the bosses are incredibly fair while still presenting you with a challenge, it really is a fantastic game. The walking speed for the characters is a little slow which does act as a negative for me, plus you could argue that it doesn't innovate very much although in my opinion I didn't want it to, but if you are a Streets of Rage fan or a beat em up fan in general, man this is a fantastic game. So there you have it, 10 of the best options for games you can get on the Nintendo Switch when it comes to beat em ups. There were a few others that nearly made the list, but I think on balance the ones that I've gone for are definitely the best. Please do put your favourites in the comments section below, do you agree with the ones I've picked, are there any that I've missed, I'm sure there are, I know there are. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos, take care, stay safe, and until next time, happy gaming.